What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So last week an extension came out for SketchUp that I really wanted to check out. Um, it's uh, basically designed to help you import high polygon and uh, high resolution models into SketchUp. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it and check it out. If you want to check out the free five day trial of Skimp, make sure you check out thesketchupessentials.com slash skimp. All right, so the extension that we're gonna talk about today is called Skimp. It's a brand new extension from the guys over at Mindsight Studios. The same group that brought you Placemaker and Profile Builder and a lot of other extensions as well. So I'm really excited to check this out because really what it centers around is it centers around the ability to import high polygon models from other sources. And so one of the big things, if you remember earlier this year when SketchUp came out, one of the things that a lot of people uh, re really kind of uh, talked about is they really wanted the ability to bring in higher polygon models because one of the areas where SketchUp struggles is bringing in these high polygon, high resolution texture models. Um, it just really slows down your models. So what this extension is designed to do is it's designed to let you bring in models from places like uh, like TurboSquid or CG Trader, like a lot of those websites where uh, you can download models for other formats. Um, previously, you couldn't really bring those into SketchUp. Well, this website, or uh, this extension really lets you do that. And so I wanted to check that out in this video. To get started, I did want to go through uh, the pricing on this. So you can get a full five-day trial um, just by downloading that over here. The commercial license is a one-year subscription, so it's $179 a year. So that's what the pricing is going to be for this particular extension. And so what I want to do now is go through and just talk about a couple different examples of different things that you can do with this extension. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring in a model. And I think uh, the model that I'm going to bring in is going to be a sofa model from TurboSquid. So if you go to the website TurboSquid.com, um, there's this sofa collection model. Um, the username for these is Van Doen. And so you can go in there and you can download download that and you can try this out. But you can see how this is a model right now. It comes in a couple different formats. It comes in an FBX and an OBJ. And I do want to point out within Skimp, Skimp supports all of these different file types. So FBX, OBJ, STL, um, all, all of these are pretty standard. Pretty much everything I've looked up, I've been able to download in uh, like an FBX or an OBJ. So this works pretty well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna check out um, how to bring in this external model. So in this case, we're just gonna click on the button for import model. And so what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to go find the file that we downloaded. And most of the time when you import files like this, what they're gonna come with is they're gonna come with the actual model style itself the actual model file itself, which is an FBX file, as well as a folder containing all the different textures that are gonna be applied in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna double click on this button for sofa collection. And note that this is a 50 megabyte file um, just by itself. And so when we double click on that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring up the skimp window, which is gonna allow us to simplify our geometry. And so what Skimp does is Skimp goes in here and you can see how this slider um, will allow you to add to or remove from the geometry that's contained inside of this model. So you can see how if I was to drag this all the way to the left, first of all, my preview is going to turn to more of like a wire mesh thing. So this doesn't actually have to, um, while this kind of loads this in here, but you can see how if I didn't do any reduction at all, this model would have 347,000 faces in it. And so that would come in as a pretty big SketchUp file. And that's really kind of a problem when you're importing things like this sofa, um, just because that's really going to slow down SketchUp. But instead, if we were to drag this slider to the right, and let's say we were to drag this down to maybe Maybe we'll put this on like 15% or something like that. So if we put that on 15%, you can see how this is coming in here and it's kind of using an algorithm to simplify the geometry in here. So you can see how instead of bringing in 300,000 faces, in this case, we'd bring in 50,000. You do need to be a little careful, though I guess this looks pretty good. But sometimes when you do this, if you're not careful, um, what this will do is this will kind of leave gaps in your model. So you want to kind of find that balance between simplifying this sum, but then 
not simplifying it so much that there's kind of holes in the model. And so the other thing you can do is you can adjust the axes that this comes in on. And so the other thing you can do is you can bring this in based on a certain number of units. And so you can see how this length in here is changing depending on which one I bring in. And so really what this allows you to do is this allows you to pick the units that this was modeled in. And you can see how if I select my units to millimeters and this comes in at about seven feet wide, which makes sense. But if I was to go into inches, this would come in at 183 feet, which doesn't make sense. So this allows you to kind of set the actual size that this is brought in. That's going to be really important. The other thing that I want to bring up real quick is you want to go into the settings. And so what I've found is to get the textures to work properly, it helps to apply this UV texture. Um, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or not, but I found if you check this box for apply UV texture, um, then what that's going to allow you to do is that's going to allow you to replace these materials really easily. You also want to make sure the buttons for maintain UVs and maintain normals are also checked because um, that's going to be where your mapping for this object is going to be. So your uh, texture mapping for this object is going to be. So you want to make sure that you maintain the UVs on this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK and then we're going to click the import button. And when I click the import button what that's going to do is that's going to import this model into SketchUp. And so this is going to bring this in and you can see how because I had apply UV texture selected, this applied this kind of checkerboard pattern texture and what that does is that shows you how the texture materials are mapped on this object. And so that's something to be aware of when you're downloading models is you want to make sure that you're downloading models that actually have UV mapping included. And you can see how one thing that we don't have with this right now is we don't have materials applied to this yet. And so that's because when you bring that model file in, in, those materials aren't actually contained inside the model file itself. They're contained in that folder we talked about called textures. And so what we need to do is we need to go find those textures and apply them to this model. So in order to do that, you're just going to go up and you're going to click on this button for the replace textures tool. And that's going to change your icon to a paint bucket like this one. And so when you have an icon like the paint bucket, um, that means this tool is active. And if we look down at the bottom, it's going to give you a couple different options. So it's going to give you an option to hold the control key to load new texture, which is what we're going to do. Um, it also gives you the ability to hold the alt key and sample a material from another face or to hold the shift key to replace the material of matching faces while maintaining the UV mapping. But really all you need to know is we just want to use the control key. So you just want to hold the control key down and you want to click on one of these materials. So in this case, I'm going to click on this material right here and I'm going to go in this folder labeled textures. And you can see how my textures are actually going to be loaded inside of this folder and we just need to find them and apply them. And so in this case, the first one we want to apply is we want to apply the fabric material to the couch itself. So the fabric material for the couch itself, I believe, is going to be this uh, 07B material, just looking at the image. So I'm just going to double click on that. What that's going to do is that's going to apply this material to this object. Um, for everywhere where it was mapped for that particular material. And you can see how these other pillows are mapped for a separate material. And so it didn't apply this to those. So we just need to go in there and we need to replace those as well. And all of those textures can be found in that folder. And there's a little bit of trial and error involved in that just because some models that you download aren't necessarily gonna have what you want them to have. So you just kind of need to be aware when you're downloading models um, that these need to, you need to download models that are both UV mapped and also have the correct texture applied to them. And so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply the wood material to the legs right here. And you can see how that's mapped nicely as well. So what we were able to do is we were able to bring in this model that originally was about 50 megabytes and bring this into SketchUp. And so now if we were to do something like, uh, like go into Enscape and render this and kind of zoom in on it, you can see how this renders out really nicely. The material looks really nice. And honestly, for something like this, I probably wouldn't even, I mean, I might load in the maps, but I might also just tell it to use the texture material for each material in order to give me a bump map. You can see how this looks really realistic. And so I was really able to bring in a very high 
quality model that otherwise would have really slowed SketchUp down and bring it in just like this. And so one thing I would recommend as you start doing this is you have a folder for a component library and you could actually start saving these um, so that you can just bring them into future models. So in this case I could just call this Sofa Collection or if this had a name I would give it a more descriptive name but I would go ahead and click Save. And so if I was to go into that folder and look at this you can see how um, I have a complete model in here that I can bring in and it's about 11 megabytes which still may be a little big for background models depending on uh, depending on how big your overall model is going to be but it's a lot smaller than the 50 megabytes plus textures that it would have been otherwise. So the other thing you can do with this that I really like is you can also use it to simplify models that are already in SketchUp. So like for example if I was to go into the 3D warehouse and let's download maybe like a car or something. So we'll click on car. Um, I'm going to sort by popularity and then I am going to take this and set it up so I'm only looking at car models larger than 10 megabytes. So we can go ahead and bring in this McLaren F F1. That's a nine megabyte file with 82,000 polygons. And we can download this into the SketchUp model. So we're gonna download this. And we're just gonna click inside of our model in order to place this in our model. And so you can see how, like if we go to view and turn on our hidden geometry, you can see how this is a pretty high polygon model. And uh, one of the things this could do is this could really kind of slow down um, your SketchUp model. So all you would do in this case is just select your model and click the button for simplify selection. Then you would go through and you would just use the slider in the same way as before. Now I will note at the moment, for some reason on my PC, and I don't know why this is, it's probably something I'm doing wrong, um, but when I simplify this existing model, it's changing the textures in here, and I can't really find a way to not make it do that. Um, I'm sure there's an option in here for that, but for some reason, I just can't find it. But in any case, you, you can simplify your 3D models using this as well. So that can also be a huge help in getting your models to run a little bit faster. So overall, I'm really happy about where this extension is taking SketchUp. I think for a long time, um, the 3D warehouse maybe hasn't been curated as well as I would like to see, and this really gives an option for uh, us to be able to go out to other model warehouses and bring things into SketchUp. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, I love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider that are supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.